Coming up on today's show, Ford dealerships begin to seriously price gouge on the MSRP of the Mustang Mark E long before it begins deliveries. Tesla pushes new updates to certain Model S and Model X cars to increase supercharging power levels. And what happens when Burger King realizes that its company sign is being mistaken for a stop sign by Tesla's autopilot? These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of Transport Evolved News. I hope you and yours are safe and if you're in the US that you've been participating in appropriate physical distancing in order to try and stop the resurgence of COVID-19 in its tracks. And if you or someone you know is worried about breathing with a mask on, well, just remember that oxygen molecules are about 0.3 nanometers long and can easily pass through fabric but the novel SARS-CoV-2 viroid is about 120 nanometers wide and usually tends to get stuck to other molecules, which increases its size further. And the reason you, as a healthy person, should wear a mask is that if you are an asymptomatic carrier, the virus tends to exit your body in an aerosolized form attached to large respiratory droplets of water and other stuff. And that means it has a tough time traveling through your mask. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how you can join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. When a new vehicle comes to market, regardless of what it's powered by, there's usually a significant amount of interest and demand from potential customers. When it comes to EVs, some automakers have shifted their pre-reservation and ordering processes online, partly because of the tech-savvy nature of the average customer, but also because dealerships traditionally know nothing about electric vehicles or don't want to. However, that is not stopping numerous Ford dealers across the US from taking Ford's pre-reservation holders and then expecting them to pay ten dollars to $15,000 over list price to get behind the wheel of an all-new Ford Mustang Mark E. Ford has been asked about this and stated that while it lists MSRP, dealerships and customers are ultimately the ones who agree on a final price. In response, I'd suggest you might want to find a dealership who won't try and fleece you, as that particular car is still several months away from launch. Although Elon Musk has been pretty vocal about stay-at-home orders and his feelings in general towards COVID-19, Tesla has now officially postponed both its Tesla Investor Battery Day and its annual shareholder meeting. The former was due to take place before the end of this month, while the latter had been scheduled for July 7th. However, with restrictions on the number of people who can attend an indoor event in effect in California, for good reason, Tesla has now set back both to occur on the same day, tentatively scheduled for September 15th. While this will disappoint some who had been looking forward to hearing sooner rather than later about Tesla's new exciting battery technology and its future plans, it does mean that Tesla will not be putting any of its shareholders or anyone else at risk. When Tesla started delivering Model 3, it restricted initial deliveries to Tesla employees. The logic behind that was that Tesla staff would be able to help Tesla iron out any final problems before beginning deliveries to the wider public. Now it seems that Volkswagen is following in Tesla's tire tracks by announcing that 150 of its production Volkswagen ID3s have been handed over to Volkswagen employees as part of a final phase of testing before wider deliveries begin in September. According to Volkswagen, employees were actually chosen randomly for this and they will be expected to give feedback to the Volkswagen ID3 team, both on how the vehicles perform, but also on the functionality of the updates that Volkswagen is hurriedly trying to produce to fix the various issues that the car has been plagued by since its conception. On Tuesday this week, Apple held its annual Worldwide Developer Conference, usually an opportunity for software engineers, media and Apple engineers to get together and learn about new features and software. This year's event was held completely online because of, you've guessed it, COVID. The keynote address, which normally includes plenty of snippets about things we can look forward to as end users and in future software updates, detailed new functionality for Apple's iOS 14, including a new function in Apple Maps designed to help EV drivers eliminate range anxiety and find appropriate charging stations. It's an early days feature, but here's hoping that it will be able to help those with cars that have terrible range prediction software. Additionally, Apple announced a new function, using your iPhone as a key for your car. Now, where have we heard that before, eh? In its relentless push to remain the king of rapid charging, Tesla has just pushed a new software update that will improve the rapid charging speeds of certain Model S and Model X cars. 
Previously, recent model year Model S and Model X cars had been limited to a maximum charge rate of 200 kilowatts, while Model 3 and Model Y cars are capable of up to 250 kilowatts thanks to the way in which their battery packs and power electronics are designed. But this new update means that compatible Model S and Model X will be able to charge at up to 225 kilowatts. Sadly, though, the update is only available to the most recent of cars, which means anything built in the last few months. Those cars apparently have a slightly different battery pack configuration, which is not previously found in variants. In a post-COVID world, Rivian might be focusing on bringing the Amazon electric delivery truck into production before its R1T, but that doesn't mean the electric automaker isn't continuing development of its self-described lifestyle pickup. Despite that moniker, though, Rivian took a pre-production, fully camouflaged R1T to a well-known proving ground in the middle of the Arizona desert to see just how far the R1T could be pushed off-road. Testing the truck's rock crawling capabilities, traction control and ability to deal with steep angles and rough terrain, the resulting video could easily be mistaken for any other rugged pickup being developed. I think this one is going to sell really well when it hits the market. And yes, I still want one. The US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA for short, has confirmed that it's conducting an investigation into 63,000 Tesla Model S cars made between 2012 and 2015. The reason? Wearing out of the embedded multimedia controller, or EMMC, that exists in the touchscreen computer at the heart of Tesla's digital dashboard. While the flash memory inside these units should last years in normal use, Tesla's operating system writes huge amounts of diagnostic log files to them in operation, which has been prematurely wearing the units out and causing the infotainment system to fail. While Tesla does offer EMMC replacement, it's often done out of warranty, which can be pretty expensive. NHTSA is investigating the problem as a potential safety concern. Unlike electric-only automakers, so-called traditional automakers have two choices when making a new electric car. They can either build a platform that's shared between electric and other drivetrains, or they can come up with a dedicated electric vehicle platform. BMW has, for the most part, focused on electrifying existing models and platforms rather than building them from the ground up. But this week, the head of BMW's work council came out in support of BMW transitioning to a dedicated electric vehicle platform, arguing that it is the only way to fully exploit the advantages of an electric vehicle drivetrain. Manfred Schorsch told Der Spiegel the company risked being completely overtaken by the competition, including Tesla. It's not clear if BMW's board will listen to his advice. On Thursday, Lordstown Motors held the reveal event for its upcoming Lordstown Endurance electric pickup truck. The event itself, which was over an hour in length, was full of speeches by various members of the Lordstown Motors team and dignitaries, including the US Vice President Mike Pence. But little to no details about the Lordstown Endurance were discussed and not a single glimpse of the inside was given which, considering last week's teaser photographs, was frankly a major letdown. And the official B-roll released by the company after the event, well, that was pretty much the vice president looking at the truck with various team members looking on, none of which were physically distancing or wearing face coverings. I think you can probably tell that I'm not impressed. And now it's time for short shorts. Ford revealed its new 2021 F-150 pickup truck on Thursday via an online streamed event. The new pickup will eventually be offered with an all-electric drivetrain, Ford says about two years from now, but is available with a hybrid drivetrain at launch and lots of smart new features that hint that Ford is really serious about going electric. Tesla has come last in the 2020 JD Power Initial Quality Study. With respondents reporting issues with the paint and trim on their new cars, Tesla clocked up 250 problems for every 100 cars made. Electrify America has officially completed the first of two planned charging corridors across the US. The first passes from Los Angeles to Washington DC via the Midwest, while the second will travel across the southern states and finish in Florida. General Motors has announced the official reveal date for its upcoming Cadillac Lyric EV. Originally planned to take place in person, the virtual launch event will stream online on August 6th. Powered by GM's Ultium battery system, this will be Cadillac's first all-electric car. Polestar and Waymo have announced a collaboration this week which will see Waymo help Polestar implement Level 4 autonomous vehicle technology into Polestar's electric vehicles. To date, no Level 4 autonomous vehicles exist outside of specific 
test programs. Could the Cybertruck float? It was a half serious question posed to Elon Musk this week on Twitter that suggested maybe, just maybe, it would be cool to make the stainless steel bodied truck float. Elon's response, quote, I think we could make that work. A new comparison between Presidents Obama and Trump has shown that over the same period of time, President Obama approved twice as many renewable energy projects on federal land as his successor. Meanwhile, 45 has approved far more oil and gas drill permits instead. Jaguar Land Rover's North American CEO spoke frankly this week with Automotive News about the challenges that lay ahead for both brands. Admitting that selling the Jaguar I-Pace was hard, he blamed customer interest and low gas prices for the low sales. As it heads towards its planned July 1st increase in price for full autonomous driving, Tesla has discounted the price of buying full self-driving for existing customers who have not yet activated the capability in their car. But I should note that full self-driving isn't actually available for you to use yet. Meanwhile, Tesla is also ramping up its end of quarter sales push by offering customers who buy an in-inventory car free supercharging for one year from the point of purchase. It's not clear how many cars Tesla has in inventory that are currently not spoken from. Amazon has acquired automotive driving startup Zoo for an estimated 1.2 billion US dollars. The startup, which as you might expect is based in San Francisco, could help Amazon develop zero emission, fully autonomous delivery trucks. This year, we've seen some pretty disturbing headlines surrounding Karma Automotive, and this week, a new one passed our desk, namely that the company is on the verge of declaring bankruptcy. Multiple sources at the firm told Jalopnik this week a Chapter 11 filing is on the way, but naturally Karma has not confirmed this. Hyundai UK has announced that it's ready to flood the UK electric car market with thousands of electric vehicles, promising that anyone who orders a Kona EV or Ionic EV could wait as little as two or three days to get a new car. And yes, it's Hyundai because that's how you say it in England. Documents submitted to the city of Fremont show that Tesla is in the process of expanding its lithium ion battery facility at the Fremont Place as part of its secretive project Roadrunner. The application would see the facility expand to employ a total of 400 and 70 staff. Zero Avia, a hydrogen fuel cell aviation company founded by Val Miktikov, a former CEO and founder of eMotorworks, has completed its first successful test flight. Taking place in the UK, the six-seat Piper M-Class plane took to the skies over Cranfield Airport. Talking of flying, the Terrafugia TF21 prototype air taxi was unveiled this week. While Terrafugia originally began as a flying car company, its acquisition by Geely Technology Group has meant that it's expanded into other areas, including air taxis. Nissan has set July 15th as the official reveal date for the production version of its Aria electric crossover, the only new all-electric model to be made and sold for Nissan markets outside of Japan. It's expected to be significantly more expensive than the Nissan Leaf. Rivian might be based in the heart of the Rust Belt, but there's been some rumours flying around this week suggesting that at least some of the company may be relocating to California. However, I should note, of its current staff, more are based in California than in Michigan, so it's really already true that California is home to Rivian. Kia has launched a more affordable version of the e-Nero in the UK. Instead of the 64 kilowatt hour pack of more expensive models, this one comes with a 39 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's available from under £30,000 if you include the UK government grant. Wireless charging specialists Momentum have outfitted 25 Jaguar I-Pace taxis in Oslo, Norway with wireless rapid charging technology capable of between 50 and 75 kilowatts of instantaneous power transfer. It will enable taxis to wirelessly charge while waiting for a fare at various taxi stands. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. Although California is home to many, many electric cars and many electric car companies, it's also home to some of the US's worst air pollution, much of which comes from heavy duty commercial vehicles. Which is why the California Air Resource Board this week has become the first in the nation to set new zero emission truck standards for big rigs. From 2024, haulage firms operating in the state will need to transition to zero emission fleets, with a mandate that by 2045, all new trucks must be zero emission within California. The regulations will first push for zero emission short haul and drage fleets by 2035, zero emission last mile delivery fleets by 2040, and a fully zero emission fleet by that aforementioned 2045 date. Given how many states follow California's lead with zero emission vehicles, 
I'm really hoping they'll follow with truck regulations too. And finally, having a car that's capable of at least some form of semi-autonomous driving is a perk that I'm sure many people already have or are really looking forward to in their next car. After all, it's been proven that semi-autonomous systems can reduce accidents, reduce driver stress, and even reduce emissions. But fast food company Burger King can see another benefit, being confused for a stop sign. According to recent social media posts, some Teslas fitted with autopilot are confusing the giant circular BK logo as a stop sign and are coming to a halt when they encounter one. Burger King's response? To offer Tesla drivers a free Whopper if they post to social media when their car stops for a Burger King. It's viral video marketing at its best and make sure you make that Whopper an impossible burger one, eh? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, where to attend local monthly meetups, or talk to EV owners about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below. And if you can't support, well, know that just watching and interacting with our content really does help us because it helps the algorithms. So for those who do, Thank you. Thanks as well to those who already contribute to the channel in whatever way they can. It is wonderful to know that throughout the coronavirus pandemic, we've been able to continue to make great content because you've continued to support us. I and the rest of the team will be off next week for a well-earned rest. So I hope you enjoy the one or two videos we've managed to get lined up for you. It does mean though that there will not be a live version of TEN next weekend. So if you are celebrating July 4th, I hope you stay safe Keep yourself appropriately protected against COVID and don't do anything dumb. In the meantime, stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live, strive for equality, be kind to one another and keep washing your hands. Keep evolving. <laughs>